Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. And of course, as we know, the days are getting a little shorter and darker and colder. But that's that time of the year. And then just what's coming up are some wonderful holidays where we get a chance to gather with not only friends and family and loved ones, but it also creates sometimes stress for people because of the differences that we have in our opinions. And the question I have for my guest, Todd Mulliken, today is... Do differences in opinion, do they hurt relationships? And we're going to talk about that. If you have a question or comment at any time in the hour, let us know what it is. 877-933-2484. Todd is not only a counselor, but he's a professor and author. You can learn more about him at his website if it's up and running. Is it running, Todd? <laughs> It's you know? not, yeah, it's not the end of the month, so we're, it's close, it, but we're but up. It's up. We're up. So if yeah. I go to it, it'll work. Yeah. What time is it? It's... It's four. It's so, four central. Let's yeah. just say yes. Yeah, let's go yes. So toddmulliken.com. M-U-L-L-I-K-E-N. Yeah, thank you for yeah. spelling it. Yes. Very helpful. All right, I've got some questions for you, Todd. Should we get started? I, I'd love to. With the uh, professional questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, the first one's a softball. Oh, good. Yeah, just to get okay. things warmed up. Okay. Are differences in opinions normal, and what should we expect? I think they are normal but often not talked about. Yeah. Say more. Because I think the majority of folks are more apt to avoid the mess versus address the mess. We like to run towards things that we know we have similar opinions on. Uh, Our body's even wired like that a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think, I do think it's it's something we don't talk enough about. So I I don't think it happens as much... I think it's it's common to have differences of opinion, but we tend not to discuss those topics as much. Mm-hmm. So if we have differences of opinions, uh, do you remain uh, friends? Uh, do you stay in the relationship or do you start to drift away? What about when there's differences of opinion that are fresh with family mm. coming up on holidays mm. around the corner? Mm. What about those? Do you like my psychological answer? It depends. I love that. Yeah. Okay. But I think in general, there was a host because I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say back. <laughs> it, mm, it, it depends, but I, I do believe as Christ followers, this is a, an area we, where we have a higher calling, mm-hmm. you know, a higher calling to curiosity, to validation, to stay in situations that are difficult. Uh, certainly we have boundaries around it that we've talked about on the show, but we're we're for others, you know, and we're seeking to understand versus making sure our opinion gets out there. Mm-hmm. So that's you know the posture is act is quick to listen. So even with disagreements, but I, I do think you and I were talking about this a little before the show. Quickly, like when somebody disagrees with us or I disagree with you know I'm saying something or they're saying something, we have a strong disagreement. Your body does kind of react to it, doesn't it? Oh, it most certainly does. Yeah, and. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking of a line that C.S. Lewis had where he said, you you make friends based on discoveries you have, Mm. where you say, you like hockey? You're kidding. I like hockey. (laughs) All of a sudden, your body has that little dopamine fire in your brain, and you think, wow, he likes hockey. I like hockey. The feel-good neurotransmitter, by the way. Yes, yes. (laughs) So that's a connection and a validation, Mm. and we like... We like having other people agree with our perspective. Yes. You think I'm right about hockey, right, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so grateful for that too, Bill. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. And so how how do we handle the ones where our body responds in, in something that's difficult? And I do think, you know, because of the last at least 10, 15 years, at least in, for me in the field, I think our bodies are almost like, I would say like the first 20 years of my practice, Bill, when people had disagreements in whatever area, it wasn't as like triggering as the last 15, for me anyway, Mm -hmm. being, you know, as old as I am and being around a while, like 
it, it so it feels to me like okay, this is going to cause division. This is going to oh, oh well, here we go. You know that trauma response almost. Sure. Whether it's a little T or a big T, that the little T response is like, you know, uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling my body is shutting down. I'm I'm feeling like hyper aroused. Like I want to be right. I'm feeling like something bad's going to happen. So I think we just get a lot of that on uh, social media posts on. TV shows on um, friendships that have gone awry, a family mm-hmm. situation. So I think our bodies are all pretty like vulnerable right now, if that makes any sense. So it, it makes sense. So what do we get to do with that? What do we get to do in our spiritual practices, in our ways of kind of recouping that and knowing that God is on the throne and he's, he's for difficult discussions. Again, what we always learn, don't we, Bill? Like just we get to look at the life of Jesus and he had, you know, he had a lot of hard conversations. <laughs> And he had a lot of situations where mm-hmm. people did not ad- agree with him. So we get to and know they didn't that. know who they were talking to. <laughs> There's that. Yeah, <laughs> that part. And he didn't just share that right away sometimes, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I think, I, I think we get to make sure that since he left us with the Holy Spirit, we just get to know that, you know, we are comforted in as our body is responding to these delicate situations. We know that he is with us and our identity is in him. And I just think that, I just think we need to, you know, drink a little bit more of that emotionally and spiritually in our in our practices so that when we go into these situations in the holidays, we have that extra dose of knowing that what is true as the wise counselor, as the advocate joins us in that, mm-hmm. in those hard conversations, because it's really powerful. And I've had a few this past week where, where you know I go, oh Lord, thanks for thanks for that. Thanks for just preparing me to just listen to somebody who has a very different view than I do, and just trying to hear what they're thinking and trying to have compassion for what they're going through. And and you know, they know I go to church and love God. And so it's and I don't always do it that way, but when you do do it that way, it almost feels like oh that was and there's a bridge there. <laughs> you know, it's it's a part of a. A journey of they left that conversation hopefully feeling heard and hopefully feeling seen. Mm-hmm. But I think it's much easier to, for me anyway, to want to avoid those situations if I know they're coming. Mm-hmm. Todd Mulliken is my guest. We are talking about differences of opinions, of which there are many. Now, I, what I learned at my mama's knee was that it's always about the relationship. Mm-hmm. So you can disagree. You can have at it with your sister, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the connection. It's the relationship mm, that matters. That's so good. Yeah. And I'm not so sure that's being lived out mm. in today's world, society, culture, whatever words you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, if you don't agree, you're toast. You do. Yeah. Or your people are making assumptions about you or your and I do think I honestly do think it's a part of a response that's so like um reactive in a way that's really hurtful. It's really like it's it's kind of demonizing the other side. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I I've dealt with it a lot uh during COVID, during uh, lots of other issues during election stuff, just all the big things that have happened the last, you know, 10 years. And so it's, but it's, and some of my best buddies, we have different views and, but we get together and we're, we're trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to listen more. Mm-hmm. I just really am trying to listen more. So we're staying in dialogue uh, versus, you know, versus kind of also developing an opinion about them because they see something that way. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, where is that going for me? Like, <laughs> mm. does that make sense? Like, if like if it's a friend of mine and we're having a faith discussion and they're struggling with my faith and, but we're, we're having fun, but we're just, God, I just don't see Jesus that way, Todd, but, you know, we're having a good, that almost feels like not as delicate because I know we're still in this and they know I love God and we're in this. Mm-hmm. But it seems like these days, mm-hmm. like, those conversations are much more elusive. It's much more like, let's go. We're going after this and we're going to have a, you know, we're going to really, I'm going to distance myself from you if you don't see things the way I see them. We get uh, quick to categorize people. Oh, you're one of those guys. All right. I don't have to talk to Todd anymore. Yeah. I mean, I have to. The 
I have 50 more minutes to talk to you, but <laughs> you get the point, don't you? I do. Yeah. In social psychology, we have this, we have many theories, and one of them is the fundamental attribution theory, where we make attributions about people. And so, like, I know even in, even in my marriage, am I making an assumption about Laura's intentions right now? Or am I, am I choosing to trust, like you said so well about the relationship, I'm choosing to trust the relationship. We disagree on this issue, but I'm for the relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm for us. I'm for the journey. But I disagree. This, my, my friend, my, my spouse disagrees with me in this area. Can we, can we choose that? Mm. Can we choose that? Mm-hmm. So, Todd, if you have a disagreement with somebody and you start to feel threatened, you've got a couple of choices. You can stay put and keep talking or you can run, right? Is that fight or flight? The fight or flight response, yeah. yes. Um, but it, does it get harder to hear someone's thoughts when you realize they've just disagreed with you? Mm-hmm. I think it does. And how do you hang in there when you think... I need to remain curious mm. and keep asking questions and keep hearing their thoughts. Yeah, I, I do think if we don't prep ourselves for that, I know if I don't, if I don't have I add that to my my devotional time or my drive time with God, I I trip up. I go to avoidance. I go to like defensiveness and versus validation and understanding. Mm-hmm. If we don't prep it, then my hurt mind overrides my wise mind. Mm -hmm. The hurt I feel in the moment is louder than my capacity to keep the big picture. So I've got to come almost into those situations with some stuff scripted out with the Holy Spirit of here's the plan (laughs) because I get to do this and I get to remember that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're enveloping me, you know, with the situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's right, Lord Jesus, yeah, you have had tons of these conversations that are hard and thank you that I see that in you. So, but if I don't prep that ahead of time, then my reactivity outweighs my capacity to be wise in that situation. Mm -hmm. I know I've said this on the show before, but did your parents have dinner parties when you were a kid? They had a lot. That was a big deal, wasn't it? It was neighborhood and they gathered for meals, didn't they? They did. And, And social life. And now here's what I learned like 40 years after the fact that I, I look back at those gatherings and they were a room full of people having the best time ever. They were. Oh, they knew how to have fun. They did. The laughter and the enjoyment. And now I look back and I think of the players there and I go, oh, hang on a second. There were Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, um, Catholics, Jews, Protestants. It was a big melting pot of people and they all loved each other. Let's go. <laughs> right. <laughs> More of that, please. Boy, big time. Right? Yeah. What happened? And, I don't and we've know. seen it. We've seen it the last 20 years, and yeah. so we get, yeah, I love that. We, and and, and we, as you talk about that, my mind just went back, and I flashed back to all the stuff I grew up in with my folks and the parties they had um, and the gatherings we had, and we had different views of stuff. But, yeah, that's a great word, Bill. Yeah, they they arrived happy and left happy. <laughs> they, <did>. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly did. And, and not to mention they, they would show up in, like, suits and ties. <laughs> Hey, at, no. some, at somebody's house on a Saturday night. I still, still think they had their extroverts and introvert rooms, though. I still well, remember that they, stuff, they which is all good. Sure. Yeah, they which is all sure. good. Yeah. Right? yeah. And half the houses didn't have air conditioning. It was just <laughs> brutal, right? All right, Todd Mullican is my guest. You can uh, find out more about him at his website. Uh, he is a counselor here in Edina, Minnesota. He's also an author and professor. You can learn at toddmullican.com. Todd, spell your last name for me. M-U-L-L-I-K-E-N. ToddMulliken.com. And if the website is working, you're you're able to go there even at the break and check it out. <laughs> Appreciate right? that. Yeah. All right. If you have a question or comment, I'd love to get it. 877-933-2484. We'll be right back. Psst. Have you heard the news? Listening just got better with the new and improved Faith Radio app. No more restrictions, no more static, no more missing your favorite shows. Now, listen when you want, where you want, and share with everyone. When you need hope, encouragement, Jesus, it's right there on your phone. Text the word app to 877-933-2484 and follow the link or search Faith Radio Network in your app store.
Welcome to the show. Todd Mulliken is my guest. We're talking about having differences in opinions and does it hurt our relationships? Well, depends on who you are and how you mm. do and what your coping skills are. If you're um, a fighter and you're with a person that wants to run, what happens, Todd? Yeah, you you might take it personally that they're shutting down. You might feel like they are freezing you out. Mm -hmm. And they are uh, avoiding you and neglecting you. And at your worst, if you're really feeling insecure, you might think that they are really against you. Versus maybe they're more of a flighter. And flighters tend to shut down under stress. They tend to freeze under stress. They tend to uh, sometimes fawn under stress where they'll want the, the fighter to just be okay and happy. And But they they're just... They're, they have their own oxygen mask on at that time. So they're not trying to do something to the fighter, typically. They're just trying to survive the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's how they typically survive the moment. And again, we all have that fight or flight mechanism. It's not an either or. Sometimes people are kind of right down the middle. But a lot of folks tend to go to a little bit more of one side versus the other. And it's just really good to see the other. You've heard me say on this show, how do I see it, not wear it? So how do I see the other in Jesus versus wear what they're saying? Mm, I like that. So I'm seeing it from a posture of empathy, compassion, validation, hard discussions, but I'm not wearing it to the point where I start to feel like I'm going to build a case against that person right there. Um, the opposite is true though too, right? If, um, if, if I'm the flighter and I'm staying in this and the fighter is not letting go, uh, what am I thinking, right? I'm thinking I'm trying to, they're controlling me. They're uh, needing to be right. They just, they just always got to keep, you know, talking about this issue versus, well, maybe, but maybe they just, they just want to keep talking. You know, they want to discuss it. Like I, I've heard, and I know my wife and I are different in this area and Laura's more truth and I'm more grace. She's more fight. I'm more flight in general, even though we're both firstborn. So we both can kind of join the party and be bossy to each other and have great ideas about how the other person can become a better Christian and all that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but in general, it's like, uh, I, I can really feel like she gains energy when I will like have a, uh, well, tell, no, I see it differently. Here's how I see it, and here's my reasoning for that. She'd rather have me do that than, like, shut down, like, oh, here we go. Oh, I, I'm froze up. And mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So if I'm a flighter, I need to realize the fighter likes to engage in disagreements and likes to engage in civil discourse. Now, at their best, they engage. At their worst, sometimes they fight unfair. But the flighter... Fights unfair too by just shutting down versus like, oh my gosh, I just need to, sh I'm shutting down here. You know, I don't, these aren't my kind of situations. I really struggle with avoidance. So I'm, hey, I love you. I'm just kind of shutting down and I'll, I'll be back, you know, or I just, I, I can't talk about this right now. I'm really like overwhelmed. You know, just the flighter needs to kind of let the other person in. So I, I think it's really good for us, Bill, to know our tendencies under stress so that when we go into these um, discussions that may come up at the holiday tables, we, we get to be at our best in Jesus because we know our, our tendencies, our, how God has designed us, what our story is, so we know what our tendencies are so that we can, you know, remain in that headspace of knowing that God is, is with us here. Uh, boy, I just want to avoid, I want to run. So if I'm that way, which I more am, how do I... Do that without just, oh, Todd wants to take care of the dishes. That was kind of quick. <laughs> oh, no, he's just taking care of the dishes, just being a nice guy. Well, maybe, or maybe I just want to get out of there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so how do I do my part and yeah. just kind of, uh, so I tell the flighters, stay in it mm -hmm. longer. It's okay. Stay yeah. in there. Take a breath. Sure. You've practiced ahead of time. God's still on the throne. Yeah. I know your body's kind of like short-circuiting, but just breathe because also God's designed your parasympathetic nervous system to kind of bring some coolant in there and whew, breathe. So I do one of the stop, one of the skills I may have talked about in this show is called the stop skill we use in dialectical behavior therapy. Sometimes it's a good to have in our back pocket. And what is it, Tom? S-T-O-P. And the S stands for, I'm actually just stopping for a second. T stands for, I'm actually just going to take a breath or two. I'm taking that breath. So 
There's what I'm doing. Is that I'm gaining that composure? Breath. Is it what is it? Are you trying to physically calm your body down? You are just okay. physically doing that because if you, if you're because what what we did forever in therapy, hey, just change your thoughts. Well, when your brain's on fire, it's hard to change your thoughts. Yeah, good point. You know, so you got to physiologically get your body like whoop more centered, if you will. Then the O is let me observe what I'm thinking or feeling. Now, for me, in a perfect world, that's when the advocate is who's already indwelled in us, right? The Holy Spirit's there. How am I, like, okay, what am I thinking here, God? What am I feeling? And and for me, it's easier to go to my feels and my thoughts. And some people, it's easier to go to their thoughts versus their feels. It's not one's bad or one's right or wrong. It's just more like, what what am I observing here, God? And for me, I usually observe, like, I just, I just I'm shutting down. Like, mm-hmm. this person's really, like, coming off aggressively, I don't like that, or this person over here seems to not want to talk about anything really difficult, so I'm going to go over here and slide down over there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm observing that. But now the P comes in the wrap up, which is, means I'm now going to proceed mindfully in Christ. So the P stands for proceeding. I'm coming back into it. And that could be us removing ourselves from the table. That could be something we do on our own in that moment. And we're just doing it to recenter ourselves. But it's nice to have that power move in Jesus down. So the proceeding mindfully for me would be is take a breath, stay in there. These people, you know, are our family, they're friends. They're, uh, there's people we've invited over who don't have a place to go on Thanksgiving. Let's just hear their stories. And they see something completely different than I do uh, or are really on really making a hard point about something that I completely disagree with. But I, I get to choose, as you said earlier, Bill, so beautifully, I, I'm choosing the relationship now over this point. And now maybe I'm a little bit more able as a flighter to stay a little bit more engaged and use my good skills. For, so for me, my, one of my better skills is actively listening. So I might ask a question because now I'm more regulated. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'll be frozen up, and I won't be able to ask a question because I'm too frozen up. So, Todd, uh, Todd Mullican is my guest. Todd, are you more of a thinker or a feeler when you're in this situation? When you're when you're confronted with a disagreement, someone comes and says, "No, Todd, that's not right." Does your thinking kick in, or do your feelings kick in? No. I, I would offer like some people are, are wired a little bit more thinking based, based oh. on their genetics, based on their family history. Mm-hmm. And some people are more feeling based. You know, one of the personality inventories that's been around forever is a Myers-Briggs. And the third quadrant of that inventory talks about the thinking versus feeling with how we make decisions. Yeah. Thinkers are business first, logical, practical, pragmatic. Um, don't really mind how it goes. Uh, business first versus camaraderie first, mm-hmm. right? So they're just going to bring it, but and sometimes bring it beautifully, sometimes not, but they're going to think first, feel when they can. Feelers are camaraderie first. Hey, I want this to go okay. I'm really feeling all the feels. I'm in the other person's head wondering what they're thinking. I'm taking that on. And so I do think it's more of a, a, a genetic kind of wiring of temperament and disposition as well as the the, the Kool-Aid mix of our, our family of origin stories and how we've communicated as a family. Mm-hmm. Is the is the cup half empty or half full in your mm-hmm. world? In my world? In your world. More of a feeler, I'm going to be more half full. Half which doesn't full. mean I'm always half full. Okay. So it doesn't if, mean thinkers are always half empty. No, so, I know, I know. Yeah. But if you're half full and I bring up the word conflict, do you, does your brain go, uh oh, trouble, or does your brain go, oh, this will be an opportunity to maybe grow my relationship? Yeah, it'll be the former, even though, unless I'm at, unless I've done a stop skill, or unless I've prepped. Okay, I'm more apt to go like, oh boy, this is going to be, again, not in my therapy office because I'm prepped, right? And it's something I've done for 35 years, and that's what I'm there for. So, come on, do that. I mean, don't be a therapist outside there, but you know, be a, you know, a wise listener and a good. A good friend, a good uh, colleague, a, a healthy stranger, because um, we're called to do that, and we get to do that. But it's easier if I've prepped ahead of time to know who's coming, what's the situation, not overanalyzing it, but just, Lord, you know, just that, just a prayer of a righteous person availeth much, so let me do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm more apt to just kind of show up because life's busy, and and when you and I just show up, it doesn't mean it's bad, but it means... We could get rattled, and when we're startled, then we're really vulnerable to those 
easily startled or even keel kind of tendencies that mm -hmm. we have. All right, why do you think it's time for a, a five person survey? You read my mind. Oh, good. Now, the question that I'm formulating in my head is Are you feeling tension about an upcoming holiday because of the differences in opinions you will be facing? And do you feel that it is going to hurt your relationships? Yes or no? Does that, that come out right? Yeah, I think so. Or I rephrase it, it if you like it. No, nope, I like it. Yeah. So tell me what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> you being serious right now? Yeah. If you feel like you have a tension in your family coming up this holiday season and that is making you scared, nervous, not really sure how you're going to face that, let us know. 877-933-2484. And we want the first five responses. Yep. We're just looking for the first five. Todd Mullican is my guest. And we are talking today about uh, hanging in there, especially when there's differences of opinion, how to be loving, how to remain curious. I think w if we can stay curious, Todd, mm, it is yeah. going to help the uh, ongoing discussion. It's going to be more disarming, Bill. Oh, is it ever? Yeah. Well, tell me more. Yeah. Ah, I that's interesting thinking. Uh, give me a little bit more information on that. Yeah, and none and of that is sharing your perspective at that point. No, and right. I think you share your perspective on... Only if asked. The, if asked, yes. Yeah, in general, I would say that. What do you think? Um, I'm. That's always usually what I do, yeah. is I wait to be asked. Mm -hmm. You know, because we live in a world of 8 billion people. Who <laughs> wants another opinion? You know, if someone asks for my oh. take, I'll give it to them, but yeah. I d otherwise I don't feel like I need to say anything. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, we have so much of that these days. For people, <laughs> I mean, not what you're doing, but the opposite. Yeah. Last word, Larry's. Last word, Lorraine's. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. All right. Are you feeling tension about the holidays? And are you fearing that you will be in a position where, because of differences of opinion, the relationship could get hurt? Or it's there's going to be damage? Now... Yes, I feel that way, or no, it doesn't concern me. I think I'm good to go. 877-933-2484. We're looking for our five-person survey. We'll be right back. It's the Afternoon Show with Bill Arno. Drive time, drive time. Let's get it started. Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad to have Todd Mulliken here in studio. He is a counselor and a professor and an author. We're talking today about the differences that we have in opinions and how they can be very hurtful in relationships because maybe we don't hang in there long enough with each other. Maybe um, we have that fight or flight response. Um, another thing, Todd, I was thinking about is it does depend on the level of of, of closeness you have with somebody. Mm. You know, this person is a, you know, a, a distant friend, so you don't feel like the stakes are as high. Mm. But when it comes to your inner circle, well, the mm. stakes got real high real fast. Mm. You think that is louder than how loud the discussion is emotionally? Oh, I think so, yeah. 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 So we're able to maybe let go more easily if it's more of a distant kind of situation. Oh, definitely, because yeah. I, I don't think you mm -hmm. are, are as inclined to disclose your your deeper feelings mm. to someone who's not in your inner circle. Right. But when it comes down to the inner circle, yeah, stuff comes out. Mm. That's good. Uh, when I do talks to pre-married couples, I usually ask about how to accept each other's differences and how important that is. And then I do a little bit of a uh, kind of name that tune game, but it's about how many letters in this. Here's the word that's one thing the fighter can work on for the rest of their life. And here's a word that flighters can work on for the rest of their life. You don't want to probably try it, do you? You don't get you got any brain no, cells I left don't. today. Yeah, no. here, it's all good. So uh, <laughs> the, the, the fighter, the main thing for the fighter to do is to increase empathy. Doesn't mean they don't have empathy. Mm hmm. But they tend to go into situations with, like, they want to kind of hold court or they want to make sure their opinion is there because the truth matters, right? 
And if the truth really matters, which it does, I, I, I want to say it. And I don't mind if there's conflict around it. So what they need to be able to do is enjoy the fact that they really are comfortable in difficult situations, but they need to make sure they're creating interactions, not interrogations. Mm-hmm. So how am I coming in with, hey, here's my take on this thing, but how about you? Where are you at? So am I inviting or am I interrogating? And so that empathy thing really matters. Like, can't so if I'm prepping for this and fighters need to prep as much as flighters in my prep time with Jesus and my prepping in a way that's saying, you know, Lord, help me be open-handed to your spirit about seeing the room and seeing that individual if it's a one-on-one discussion and knowing their story and making sure that person is seen more than making sure I get my opinion across. So, but if we don't do that prep work, we're going to come in and if somebody brings up something that's a trigger for me and I'm more apt to be kind of a quick fire ready aim person, which Mm -hmm. fighters tend to be, they tend to be more fire ready aim. Uh, And maybe that's been from their family of origin story. Uh, Maybe they were even like bullied and now it's their turn to win. Or maybe there's, you know, just their family just talked about tough stuff and always bantered it around, but didn't really listen very well, whatever mm-hmm. their story is. But let God hold you in the story to know like, hey, this is a new situation in terms of you are a new person in Christ. Remember that. So how do I come into this situation knowing my audience like Paul would do, like Peter would do in the book of Acts, right? They knew their audiences. I became all things to all people in order to save some. So how am I doing knowing the audience and coming in with an interaction versus an interrogation. I think that's a huge thing for the fighter to work on is empathy. Uh, The flighter, the one word for the flighter might be something you might not think about, but the flighter in general in their most intimate relationships just need to be more honest about how they actually feel because they tend not to, it doesn't mean they're dishonest or pathological liars, but they tend to avoid their own feelings and thoughts versus when asked, making sure they they are honest too. I think of a lot about Ephesians 4, 25 and 26. 26 says, hey, in your anger, do not sin. Don't let the devil get a foothold. That verse, you know, Mm -hmm. I tend to think in general, the the fighter tends to, to sin, if you will, in what they say. And the flighter tends to sin in what they don't say, you know, what stays inside and build a case against the other. So I think and verse 25 just talks about speaking truthfully to your neighbor. So how am I doing as a flighter by being truthful in a way that's... Because the best part of the flighter bill typically is they, they kind of want it to go okay. You know, they want harmony typically. Mm-hmm. And so they'll be really harmonious. So I kind of like it when the flighter engages more, not like, hey, I'm going to share my opinion in a way. Because the good news about the flighter is that they will be more interactive typically than the fighter. But they have to be honest Mm -hmm. versus avoid the mess all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the key. Those are just a, a key word for the fighter, a key word for the flighter. Fighters to increase empathy, flighters to increase honesty. And for sure, that really helps couples when they each do that, when they know their style. Uh, I've seen family generational things build change when the fighter is more interactive versus interrogative. I've seen it help children find their voices. I've seen couples do better when the fighter knows that. And I've seen flighters uh, start to build less resentment when they start to increase honesty about difficult things when difficult things do come up. Mm -hmm. Our survey's in. It looks like there's more people with a little bit of tension Mm. coming up, that there could be that differences of opinion at a holiday event that could cause hurt and ongoing difficulty and damage um, in relationship. Now, I got a comment here, Todd, but I'm going to ask you in advance, before the comment, have you ever been to a county fair where a caricature artist... Drew you? I haven't. Or at the mall I've been to or Tony something. Fair, but not when somebody's. Well, I mean, have you ever had a caricature artist draw you? No, I haven't. Yeah. I mean, they're they're fast and furious, they, right? They ten minutes, but usually what they do is they they pick a feature right on your face and they exaggerate it. Mm. That's usually what happens. And yeah. you look at it, and you know, you go, ah, does that? <laughs> <laughs> I already know that about that myself. Right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> if if you were doing one for Jay Leno, you'd have an enormous chin, right? Because mm. that's a feature, and but. A caricature artist would d- distort it. Now, where are you going with this, Bill? Uh, 
where I'm going with this is if you have a, a beef towards somebody, you disagree with them, it might be the thing that leads in your mind. Mm-hmm. Here, here he comes, here she comes. And it's, it's an issue that I, that I've already decided I'm, that's all I see. Yeah. I see the liar. I see the, de- the deceiver. I see, um, a comment that came in that said, our, um, I, I feel tension because our son and, and daughter-in-law are coming and my husband didn't agree with the marriage. It's been mm. a hard three years. It's a mm. long story. So our hard. Daughter-in-law is a sweet person, but mm. you know, so he's probably seeing that feature. Yeah. That, that I don't like feature. That's yeah. what he sees. Yeah. It's a good word. Uh, that was a long winded explanation. No, I, I love, I love the character thing. That makes a lot of sense. Caricature. So I, I do think what's helpful is to, again, know, can I have enough insight to know my own, my own style here? Do I, and if I, if I know for me as a pleaser type, I'm building a case against and my caricature of that person is, oh, here they come again. I'm leading out with what I call a hurt mindset versus a forgiveness mindset. The forgiveness mindset is seeing the other person that has a story too. They have a story. Mm-hmm. They have a story. They have a story. And what is their story? And am I seeing them as God sees them? Or am I seeing them in a way that's just my own? Like that that listener said so well, we just get it locked into that view. And I do think it usually comes from a place of hurt, right? I'm hurt, I'm frustrated by what they've done or the difference of opinion we ha- have. Um, and they have said hurtful things. So my that my hurt mindset kind of leads and it's front there. It's it's right in front. Now, the forgiveness mindset isn't just um, passive. The forgiveness mindset is actively releasing the other, the 70 times 7. But I also might set a boundary with that person and talk about that. But, yeah, so I, I think, you know, it's really important. Can I put that thing aside at that dinner party when they're coming over and really try to seek to understand versus focusing on that one area we have that huge disagreement in. Mm -hmm. Is the opposite of defensive compassion? Mm, I I think so. Okay. You've heard me say, speak without offending, listen without defending. Say that real slow because that's so important. Speak without offending. So am I speaking with my best sense in Jesus to not offend but to interact? Mm -hmm. Now, you don't want to get walked on. You want to speak your truth. Right. But can you speak without being offensive? Right. And can the receiver listen without being defensive? defensive. The best way we can do that without to, to try to increase the ability to be disarming is generally, especially if, like, to your point earlier, Bill, if we know the person well, so they know generally I'm kind of wishy-washy pleaser types. So if I bring something up that's a little bit more assertive, not aggressive, not passive-aggressive, uh, which is kind of sarcasm and, and stuff. So am I leading out with something I really feel passionate about, but I'm still going to ask them what they think. I think that's the best. That's truth and grace wrapped up nicely. But am I going to actually lead out with that or am I not going to do that? Mm-hmm. And is the fighter going to lead out with an interaction or are they going to lead out with an interrogation? So speaking without offending is huge. But I also think, Bill, listening is kind of a whole different animal where when I'm in that listening posture, the other person kind of has the floor. So I'm not trying to come up with my own stuff against the other and kind of wait for my next volley back. I'm Mm -hmm. just listening to first try to validate what they're experiencing. That's why I think James was so wise when he said, you know, be quick to listen, James one nineteen, just quick to listen. Uh, because typically what happens is people usually offend and then the person naturally defends. So listening to understand, listening to validate it are clearly get-tos that we get to do. Mm-hmm. Todd, talk a little bit about having a, a curious mind when you are feeling tense because someone gave you a very different opinion from what you might hold dearly. Oh, gosh. And you start to feel the hair on your neck standing up a little. Yeah. And how do you develop a curiosity mindset so you can uh, keep asking good questions? You know, I remember that old Saturday Night Live skit with uh, Gilda Radner where she was oh. so, so, so dogmatic about her position. Yes. Just fire, and then she would at the end get corrected, and she'd go, never mind. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, because how many times does that happen to you where you've oh, taken boy. a position and you fought it and you realize, oh, wait, oh, wait, I got that wrong. Yeah. 
right? So, so isn't well, it healthy just to be curious and keep asking it, questions? It is. And the best way you can be curious, I can be curious, is if we realize, like, hey, the relationship matters more than anything else. Yeah, amen. It just really does. And so let me be curious about what, what do you got? You know, tell me more. Like you said earlier, I love what you said earlier, Bill, about tell me more about that or what is that like for you or that really. And I think when we're with somebody really close, I think it's okay to be, the other V I use a lot besides validation is vulnerability. So I think it is okay to say, God, I found myself really like taken aback by what you said, but I'm here. I love you. So tell me more about that because I see it differently. But I mean, I think it's even okay to do that as a pleaser type because the other person is probably going, oh, oh my gosh, they actually said something to me that was, you know, a little discordant back. You know what I mean? So that's why I said it depends earlier. Mm -hmm. Become all things to all people in order to save some, like, you know, know that person. What's your story with them? What's the history? What's what's the dance been like? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. So how am I doing with, that's why I think our own personality awareness really matters. And so when that fighter comes in with more mercy, it's just a game changer to that conversation Mm -hmm. when the fighter comes into hey i I don't have to fight for this i get to just listen more and and then when you already have that that if you will um, reputation of being kind of a truth teller and you come in with grace first it's like whoa it's a total like in my opinion kind of like jesus did with the the sermon on the mount like whoop upside down here we go just totally flips it in a beautiful way Mm mm-hmm and then the same way for us that are more pleaser based where we just avoid, 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 avoid. If I come in and I try to be curious and I also might say, God, I, God so I'm vulnerable enough to say, God, I found myself really like, well, I was taken aback by what you said, but I want to learn more because I love you. And what do you got? Tell me. Yeah, more. I like that. Right. I like that. We're going to take a little break and come right back. Todd Mullican is my guest. ToddMullican.com is his website if it's up and working. And we will uh, continue our discussion on the differences that we have in our opinions and our views and our perspective and do they hurt our relationships or can we love each other through them we'll be right back Emmanuel God with us and he's with you of course Christmas is that reminder that he is with you author Max Lucado's Advent devotional in the manger reminds us that you are never alone because God sent his son Jesus to be with you. Enter to win your copy of In the Major by Max Lucado at MyFaithRadio.com. Back with Todd Mulliken. Todd, interesting uh, conversation, especially when it comes to... Uh, coming and bumping heads and having differences of opinion or perspective. And I know we've got the holidays coming up. So some people, according to my short five-person survey, are a little anxious Mm. that it's back into the fire. Yeah. And things may not go well. And I'm nervous. Right. But can we keep the big picture in mind? Can we value the relationship over anyone's opinion or perspective? Eight billion people in this world. Nobody needs another opinion, right? Mm. And can we value the connection above all else? Um, Okay, now your turn. Yeah, and here's where that's the toughest. I think it's the toughest if I'm in a family and the person that is holding court has held court for the last 450 years. And I'm just, here we go again. My mind is so triggered. I don't want to hear it one more time. (laughs) So that's why I say it kind of depends a little bit, which doesn't mean I just don't engage. But it means I'm I'm sure not add, adding more resentment to that bank account. Yep. So, and I see their story because that person has a story too, usually. So uh, I think we have to kind of make space for that a little bit. Like for families, there are dynamics that have been in there for a long time, typically. And so there's those natural triggers. And now we're adding into it an area of disagreement, right? So I do think it's important to know like, uh, I still think we win over, though, with curiosity. Curiosity is one of the main features of being what we call, in my field of psychology, critical thinkers, which doesn't mean we're critical people. It means we're, we're critically thinking about things, in my opinion, just like Jesus did. You know, So it creates a, a posture of mindfulness, open-mindedness, being skeptical, not in like a, 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 an unhealthy way, but just you know, curious and skeptical about something, you know, mm-hmm. thinking it through a little bit. So I think that's really important that we stay curious because it's, 
you know, when we hear, you know, the, uh, the scriptures talk about the truth shall set you free. And for me, the, the, the truth here in Jesus is that we just get to choose the relationship over everything else. And the relationship of I am, I'm for you. I totally disagree with your approach or what's happening here, but I'm willing to listen and try to understand what your perspective is and be curious about it. Because even that will provide like a place of mercy and it's showing as a Christ follower, choosing mercy over scorekeeping. So I do think that matters. Now, if I'm on a one-on-one with that person, just me and that other person, and I've got a long history with that person, and I've been more of that codependent, eating it, eating it, eating it, maybe I'll step in more as a pleaser and assert but not dominate and assert like, God, I, thanks for sharing that perspective. Mom, my, my perspective is different. I see it this way, but... I know how you feel and you really feel strongly about that and you've shared that, you know, regularly over, you know, for a long time. So I know your position on that and I see you and I see you and I know you in that. And thanks for being, you know, sharing your perspective. I'm just letting you know, you know, here's my perspective on that, but I love you and I'm for you. So once in a while, that's kind of, Bill, if you will, as far as it goes, when we may have to like move into that assertive, not aggressive, but assertive category. But overall, what I'd love our perspective to be really is one of just of one of curiosity, compassion, empathy, understanding, because people that are watching, if you will, because uh, I think I don't know how you feel about it as a, a Christ follower, but I, I think, you know, we're being watched a lot, you know, mm-hmm. and I mean that in all the best ways where when, 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 when we lead out with mercy, we lead out with peacemaking, when we lead out with understanding, when we lead out with curiosity, I think it's a win for the kingdom every single time. I do. I think it matters. Mm-hmm. Is this something we can improve upon through practice? Big time. I right, figured. Repetition, yeah. But I, I'm a, I, I know I probably said it four times already this hour and I apologize, but like it's, if I don't prepare ahead of time for those situations, I'm much more apt to respond how I have the past 63 years. And if I want to do something different, maybe I don't. Maybe I've loved the posture I've had. I'm grateful for it. I've prayed it up. And it's been the kind of the same thing. It's felt louder the last 15 years, but I feel okay about where I'm at. Like some of your listeners responded that way. Great. But if it feels like you're being called to maybe respond a little differently, um, just know like compassion wins. Mm-hmm. You know, compassion, seeing the other and not wearing their stuff, it just wins the day. It keeps you in relationship. It keeps you in that journey of following them in Christ and being that amazing example. And that, for us as Christ followers, hopefully that gets our dopamine going, right? Yeah. <laughs> that feel-good neurotransmitter that God's designed in us, like that's what matters more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Todd, we just have a couple of minutes left. Let's summarize. And if we were to summarize, we would say that we need to value the relationship above an opinion, figure out um, how to remain curious, and be a good listener. That's good. That's all I got. Yeah. I, I, got more? I, all three of those are perfect. I would add to it, know our own uniqueness and what our tendencies have been so we can work on those and understand those. Again, mm-hmm. which side of the street are you tended to be on? If yeah. you're more of that fighter first, maybe come in with a question and an interaction versus uh, a statement. If I'm more of that flighter, stay curious, be engaging, don't leave the hard situation, maybe stay in there longer mm-hmm. and just and breathe through it. Use that stop skill in real time that we talked about. Breathe through it. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and be present in that and, and share a perspective if you want to, but be present in those hard conversations. And the word that I want to leave with is compassion. Yeah. As, as, it, as I get older and I see more people with more trouble in their life, Really, my heart softens because mm. I have compassion going, yeah, things are hard. But now you're, I, Bill, I just think it's beautiful. You're seeing them, right? You're really seeing them versus right, being dude. defined by the feeling you might have with a the perspective they have. So that's why I love to see it, don't wear it. When you see it, when you and I see it, I just think the, the wisdom and the mastery of Jesus comes in more and the Holy Spirit becomes that wise counselor that helps you see the person. And we need to just see people with those eyes because that's really missing these days. Mm-hmm. And if people would want to reach out to you and your services, how would they do that? 
They can look at ToddMulligan.com. It's got all the clinic info and the website website and everything. Is it rocking and rolling? Yeah. Uh, You know, it's always good to come on the show. I'm going to go check after the show. Well, it's good to come on the show monthly because it it helps me remember to look at the website (laughs) monthly. So I really appreciate that. (laughs) All right, Todd. (sighs) Thanks so much, Bill. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, we'll take a little break and be right back with Hour 2. Um, I hope you have had a good day. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Radio. It's uh, really a delight to spend time with you in the afternoon or whenever you get a chance to listen. Maybe you're a podcaster and you're not going to put it on till 9 o'clock tonight and you're going to get on the go for a walk and listen to the show. I always appreciate that as well. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.